Hi guys, Luke Jones here, back for Darts Mad, uh, and this week I'm thrilled to be joined by my PDC Tour card holder, Kieran Trehan. Thanks for coming on, Kieran. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me, Luke. Cheers. No problem at all. Um, I want to start off by congratulating congratulating you for well, not only qualifying for the Worlds, but you're actually the first Irishman to come onto the channel. Well, you got uh, no doubt. Two huge accomplishments there. Yeah, hopefully first of many. Yeah. Um, yeah, so last year you made your debut with Ali Pali. You yeah. obviously got to the last 64, losing out to Mervyn King. Um, so how, how good is it? How excited are you um, to be going back there? Yeah, definitely. I, I loved it last year. You know, it was great. It's just... Obviously, it's every player's dream to play at the Addy Paddy Lake. But um, yeah. to be honest, after you know 2020, for anybody who turned professional this year, it's been a bit of a disaster, really. You know, yeah. we've probably only had like 30 percent of what we should have played. So, like the main goal was that worse to be to be back at the Addy Paddy. That would have you know sorted everything out. So I'm just delayed now. I'd, I'd kind of do it the hard way in the end, but yeah. it's good good feeling to get through after a kind of a tough year, really, like with everything going on. So. Just, I can't wait to get back now, so hopefully I can uh, go a few steps forward from what I did last year, but uh, I played well last year, so at least I have good experience from there now, you know, it's yeah. the main thing. So let's go to how you got to Ali Pali this year. Obviously, you had to enter the qualifiers. Um, you you played brilliant, actually. You came through the first round against Barry Bates, and then after that, you beat, the, you beat Michael Bernard, Mark McGinney and Joe Cullen. Uh, not Joe Keller, Joe yeah. Mernan, averaging 98 and 99 in those games. Um, so how pleasing for you was it being able to produce your best when it mattered most? Yeah, definitely. You know, there was a lot of uh, like a lot of tension in the room that day. You could feel it. You know, yeah. such a there was a lot on the line. But uh, the first game against a fellow Welshman of yours, uh, Barry Bates, yeah. I was kind of I was lucky to get through that. Really, he he'd won there at the tops to beat me. But uh, I had to go to a good 70 under pressure. And then after that, to be honest, I didn't look back. I got a, uh, I averaged 398 three times in a row in the last three games. Like, so yeah. I felt very good. So I was very happy with how I played. You know, uh, I had a tough game against Joe in the last one. Went all the way to the wire. You know, I couldn't, I was, I was throwing well, but I just couldn't get rid of him. You know, yeah. he's such a such a solid player. Like, but uh, I, threw, I had a very good last like to uh, seal it. So it was a great feeling. You know, it was probably one of the most satisfying uh, wins I had because of what was on the line and what was at stake, you know. <clears throat> and you actually had to play one more game than most players as well. Yeah. Did you think that extra game benefited you? Uh, yeah, looking looking back now, I think it actually did. Um, at the start of the day, I wasn't so sure, you know, but well, I suppose, especially coming through a close game as well, you know, kind of yeah. the match for the rest of the day. But uh, yeah, I think it did help me, because after that game, I just kicked on big time. So yeah. it probably benefited me in the end, really. So we know now that you're going to be playing Wayne Jones in round one. Wayne's a top player, been around for many years. Um, so, and then you could be coming up against Joe Cullen in round two. So, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, uh, well, obviously, like there, there's no easy games, really, you know. But, no. Uh, no, I, I, just, I think it's not the worst draw. Like, I can definitely, like, I'm definitely capable of uh, winning two games. Like, but. Uh, just focus on the first game first now, to yeah. be honest. I'm not even thinking about Joe Cullen or anything like But uh, hopefully, if I can just perform the way I did last Monday at the qualifier, no, I, love, I think I'll be more than capable of getting through. So I'd love to, I'd love to go a step forward and get through in after Christmas. But as I said, like, we just have to kind of take it one game at a time, really, and the rest will look after itself. Uh, you, I was here in um, round two last year. You went down narrowly to Mervyn King. So is that something you want to put right now? You just want to get back there and obviously you could play Joe Cullen in the second round. That would be a massive scalp. Yeah, yeah. Last year was uh, like I played very well in the first game. The second game was tough to take, really. I started yeah. so slow, but uh, probably looking back now, I probably should have won the game in the end. But uh, look, that's all experience. You know, more, that's yeah. more has been there probably 25, 30 times. Like, so... Yeah, but uh, I'll be hoping like that my experience from last year will help me as well this year, and uh, hopefully there'll be a crowd. But uh, we're not sure now. Which uh, it looks like London could be going into tier three, so we could be going back to behind closed doors. But 
if that happens, we'll just have to adapt to it as well, you know, just have to take whatever happens. Yeah, uh, you obviously won your tour card at the back end of last year by topping uh, uh, via the development tour. Um, and then that obviously got you two years on the pro tour. Uh, you started off this year in the very first event, you beat Justin Pipe 6 3 and then Steve, Stephen Bunting 6 2. That must have given you so much belief beating players of those calibers in your first pro tour event. That must have given you so much belief going forward. Yeah, big time. They were they were uh, they were great scouts, you know, just to yeah. prove to myself that I can beat the best players that, that are around. But uh, yeah, the, like uh, I think just before the lockdown happened in March, I, I had a good weekend and I felt like I was uh, like it is a big change going straight to the pro tour from the development yeah, yeah. tour. But uh, after about two or three months, I felt like I was getting into the swing of it and I was getting used to it. And then unfortunately, the lockdown happened. But uh, you know these. Those five days at a time in Wigan and or not Wigan, sorry, in Milton Keynes and Coventry, yeah. they're tough, you know? especially if you don't get a a good start to the week or you get a few bad draws. Like it's a, a big difference to just playing on the weekends. Yeah, that's the thing. If you start off with a couple of like, bad performances or yeah. losses, then I it's guess in your head, then, it? yeah, it's kind of like if you if anybody who's had started those weeks well normally end up having a good week, you know. Yeah, I think. Uh, but hopefully next year we'll get back to playing every weekend instead of blocks, I think, because I think most, player, most players would further in it. The bubble life is hard, like really, you know, yeah. you're locked into hotels and tests all the time. It's not, it's not easy. Like. That really does test your mentality then, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a big change, you know, but uh, I think players, players are probably getting used to it now, but as I said, like hopefully we'll go back to playing normal weekends like we normally do. Uh, you've also beaten notable names such as Jamie Hughes, uh, world match play champion, Dimitri Vandenberg and Steve West. How satisfying is it pulling off wins like that? And obviously it must give you huge confidence in your game. Yeah, big time. They're again like they're great wins as well, you know, and like there's no real easy draws on the pro tournament. Oh. So no matter who you're playing, you're gonna to have to be on your game. But uh like I know once I play near my game and I'll I i will give anybody a game. It's just consistency really, as everybody says, that oh, that's all it is. That's what separates the top yeah. sixteen from the rest, you know. They're they're able to do it week in, week out, but I'm only like or really I'm only starting off when you think of it. So yeah. but once uh target really is just to keep building on each year, like and just keep climbing really. That's what that's all you want to do. Just keep going up the rankings and take it from there. The rest will look after itself like. And seeing what you've already achieved, uh, you're on, still only 21. Um, yeah. Obviously, the future's looking bright for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good players coming from Ireland as well. So, yeah, yeah. Short, or uh, like we've a, we've a good system in Ireland now. So, I think maybe 10 years ago we didn't have really a good system, but now we do, and it just proves as well, like that the development tour and challenge tour is working as well. You know, the experience we got off playing that, yeah, yeah. like. Coming from the development tour to a pro tour, like it's the same venues. The the only difference is the standard and competition, but like it's the same surroundings, and so it's kind of like a general progression, really, when you think of it. So it's yeah. hopefully, hopefully the PDC will keep doing that in it because I think the system is definitely working on it. Looking at the players coming through. Yeah, um, obviously you've also come up against players like Michael Van Gerwen, Nathan Aspinall, James Wade, Devin Peterson. Although you haven't won those games, how much of a learning experience has it been for you playing those guys? Yeah, exactly. Like That's just experience you can't buy, you know, playing the top names in the biggest competitions in the world, you know. And every, every time you play them as well, it just becomes more natural the next time you play them. So I suppose really at the end of the day, it's only another game. It's just... yeah. You probably you mightn't get as many chances as what you do in uh, in normal games. That's the only difference. Like if you get a, if you get a shot against the likes of Van Gogh, and you have to, it has to go. That's the difference. So, yeah. But uh, no, as you said, like great a great experience. You can't. There's thousands of there, millions of our players in the world who yeah. love to be in and get to play against names like as you said, like so. No, I, I love it. It's great. Uh, great buzz. But uh, the next or next week now is the one I'm really looking forward to. You can't be playing on the the big stages. Yeah. Obviously, you it's a massive honour, really, playing against those players. But when you're sitting there waiting for the draw to come out and you see Michael Van Gerwen's name, are you thinking, oh, no? 
And the big plus for you is obviously because it's only your second appearance at Ali Pali and not defending anything this year either. So it's a good chance for you to kick on now and get that ranking money up. Yeah, big time. Uh, like I, I was a bit disappointed to miss out in the players' finals, but the uh, world was the, bit, the main one to get into. And next next year, I won't be defending anything either because um, last year didn't go on my ranking. So ah, right, yeah. if you can have a couple of good runs at the Ali Pali, it changes everything. As it's been proven, like you know. One or two, one or two good tournaments at a tournament like that, and you just fly up the rankings before you know it. So, uh, especially like the the rankings weigh so heavily in the World Championships, you know. Yeah. So, I think players would rather have a few bad tournaments in the other majors and make up for this definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, looking back at your first year on the Pro Tour, uh, what do you take from it? Um, yeah, I suppose. Just again, like it's just experience you can't get really. It's just yeah. a bit frustrating that we weren't able to play as much as what we should have, really. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, the European tours were the big one, really. Like there was only three four, or four, 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 them, four, I think. four yeah. out of four out of thirteen, like that's and like that. That's really where you make uh, most of your money to qualify for these TV yeah. tournaments. Like, so, uh, like I'd be hoping next year to get into maybe even half of them, like to really give me a good chance to win a few tournaments and uh, so yeah like the pro tours are good but the European tours are really where you where you make the difference on the rankings you know yeah obviously this year is, it hasn't been great in, with the virus and stuff but last year was, was normal um, you had a great year you on the you reached two finals on the development tour you won a challenge to a title and you made a final the very same weekend um, how did it feel winning that challenge tour event? Because the standard even now, even on the challenge tour and development tour, is a sky high, isn't it? Yeah, like uh, like that was that was actually the first challenge tour I ever went to, and I managed to win it, and I got to the <laughs> final day as well. Probably the only regret I had was probably not playing more of them really. But uh, yeah. I was kind of constant, like it's hard to play everything because last yeah, year, yeah. Like, you know, especially when you have other tournaments going on, but. Uh, I was concentrating more on the development tour. I was I was disappointed not to win one last year, but looking back, anyway, I got what I wanted, you know. Yeah. The main thing was to get the Ali Paddy spot and the tour card. Like, uh, well, to be honest, the tour card was the main objective. I didn't even realize I was going to get into the Ali Paddy till the day of yeah. I, when I was told I was in. So that was a, a nice added bonus. But uh, yeah, a challenge tour as well. Like, that's they're just great confidence boost, like to be able to win them because they're tough days against. Like, I don't think people. Uh, Mightn't follow it as much. Appreciate how good the standard yeah. is. There's very high. Like you need to be averaging ninety plus to have any chance, really. So like, if you took up, like, there's probably twenty players, maybe more on the challenge tour who could easily mix it on the pro tour. Yeah, like, so yeah. it's just hard, as you know. So you go to that first challenge tour, your first one you've ever played. You win it. You must yeah. think this is easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. Just, I know I just uh, I could have probably actually won the second day as well in the final, but uh, yeah, yeah. As I said, you guys probably just should have probably went to a couple more because I'd have probably gone into uh, a few pro tours, which would have been nice as well. But just, uh, still, played, there was plenty of time in it, so I got there in the end. <laughs> yeah, um, obviously, then you then proceeded to you entered the World Masters. Uh, you got to the quarter final. It's obviously one of the second most prestigious. Uh, tournament in the BDO um, but obviously it was overshadowed by all the, uh, the fast really with the redraw and things did you get a sense at that moment that the BDO was dying yeah well like to be honest I um, I never really played the BDO any before going to that I played the uh, Northern Ireland Open and uh, one or two others but like I never done the tour so when I got over there and I started seeing everybody panicking about the redraw, I was kind of just laughing rocks. It made no difference to me anyway, yeah. you know. Like, but uh, yeah, you could see just the difference between how the PDC ran it. Like that was actually, I was saying to my manager, that was the first tournament I've ever went to 
even local competitions where there was a redraw. I've never seen a redraw, and it's the second biggest tournament in the world. Yeah. So you could see things weren't looking good. But uh, yeah, like the Masters was was again. That was I think that definitely helped me towards the Ali Pali. Yeah. Even though like it's not the same, you know, the crowd's so quiet and it's not as big. But uh, like you can't. The TV experience was brilliant, and I was probably disappointed not to go before it really. But uh, no, it was it was great. It was a great week. Like I enjoyed it. Yeah. And well, obviously the BDO has died now. Um, it's a massive shame. Like like yourself, you probably watched all those great players growing up on the TV. Um, it's just a massive shame that it that it's gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's like you wouldn't have thought it would have came to this ten years ago. You know, it was such yeah. a it was obviously a respectful or or, or respected organisation. But uh, I was just watching the the mad organisation yesterday, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Bowman. Steve's a great fella to be in charge of any organisation, so that looks really exciting and it'll be something different. And I, it looks like the WDF will take over uh, the Bidionia, so they should, they should hopefully, hopefully within the next year or two, we'll be back to normal. And I think Lee, they should have never left Lakeside, didn't they? In my, in my yeah, eyes, I yeah. think that was the biggest thing, you know. Like everybody who probably didn't even follow the BDO knew about Lakeside and stuff, so just small, small things really, but it was happening for a couple of years, I think, when you look back that it was. Yeah slowly like which as you said like you need the you need the grassroots as well i suppose you can't just have our pdc like. um going back on to yourself before we finish um you obviously got your second year next year on the pro tour uh, you obviously you'll be trying to get in that top 64 to keep your tour card um so what well apart aside from that what are your aims really uh well obviously that would be the main one to get into but uh like as i said get in some of these european tours and if they go ahead and the players and the worlds again and then like after that then we'll just kick on and try and you know break top 50 then we look higher again top 32 but like just the main thing really is just to keep climbing you know so there's plenty of time but uh yeah that'd be the main goal to be but as i said after the world championship i could be nearly up to it already so we'll just have yeah. to what happens but uh, no, I'm, I'm feeling good now no, and I just I can't wait to get going so practice is going well anyway as well so that's the main thing that's good to you and you've obviously been playing the home tour as well so that, that obviously the more game time against these top players the better isn't it yeah that was that's really good practice to be fair um, I only played Thursday but uh, I'm not sure that could be the end of it now I'd say unless there's a market for it maybe but uh, yeah it's great practice you know playing against all tour card holders and you know if you're getting and players are getting paid for it as well, which always helps as well, you know, especially yeah. during these times. So the PDC have been very good; like they're always trying to help out the players. This with things with the COVID situation and stuff. So you can only thank them as well for that kind of an opportunity. So yeah, it's very good. Right, I'm gonna finish with one question and do your best. I know you're only a young man, um. So I'm gonna ask you. Who are your top five greatest players of all time, going from number five right down to number one? Of all time, jeez. Probably tough uh, for you because you're only young. Uh, you're out now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd probably say Gary Anderson, five. Or no, I'd say Barneville, five. Uh, probably go John Law, number four. Gary yeah. Anderson, number three. Oh, no, actually, I'll have to take out John Locke so I'm going to miss out one of the main fellas. So you go uh, Barneveld, Anderson, yeah. uh, Bristol, Van Gogh, and Taylor. As right. a stand, that, that could change over time, but that's not one <laughs> Yeah, it is, um, it's, it's a lot of debate about the first two, isn't it? It's always yeah, a lot of debate. Yeah. It's a lot of good players who probably get in there as well, you know, for other people, so. Yeah. Well, massive thank you for coming on, Kieran. I obviously I wish you all the best for Ali Pali. Now I hope to see you have a good run. Um, and obviously I want to see you have a good year next year and keeping that to a card. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Thank you, Kieran.